Hey everybody, it's John, and just a quick message before the show starts today. Wendy and I are very excited to say that we're going to be taking part in Namely's HR Redefined 2019 conference, which is being held May 5 through 7 in New York City. We hope you can join us as we're going to hear some amazing speakers, meet a lot of industry experts, and build our networks. If you go to hrredefined.namely.com, you can use the code HRR196 at checkout and you'll get 50% off your ticket. So again, hrredefined.namely.com. Use code HRR196 at checkout for 50% off. Can't wait to see you there. And now on to the show. Hello and welcome once again to the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast. This is episode 61. John and Wendy talk to Paul Lalonde. I'm your host, John. And I'm Wendy. How are you doing, John? I'm great. Wendy, there's a tag that's been on the last couple episodes at the Open. Mm -hmm. We've not had a chance to record. We got some big news. Oh, yeah. We're headed to New York City. (laughs) Woo! You know, um, working with Namely, and uh, they invited us to be a part of their conference this year, their third conference of HR Redefined. I'm super excited about this, John. I, it's, uh, it's not a large conference, so we'll get to meet a lot of uh, great folks and uh, do a lot, of, a lot of learning, I think. Um, you know, Nora talked about how this conference is really you know, rolling up your sleeves and getting to work. Um, so I'm kind of uh, excited to see what, uh, what they bring out for us. Wendy, I, I am so happy that this all came together. Mm-hmm. You know? Look, Namely, everybody knows Namely has been just an amazing partner for us in the last year, sponsor, you know, share our content, just mm-hmm. awesome people. And Nora, who is our dear, dear friend there, had contacted us about this opportunity. And how could we say no? I mean, it's right. awesome. They have Sean Anchor as their keynote. And one of the spotlight speakers that I'm really excited to hear is Valerie Field, who is, they call her Coach Val. And she was, she's a gymnastics coach from UCLA, but has coached some of the biggest gymnasts in the in the country over the last many years and is really starting to talk about her experience as a leader and how she really didn't plan for leadership in that world, in the gymnastics <laughs> world, but she's she's coached a lot of major people. My wife loves, you know, the Olympics and the gymnastics, so I, I'm really stoked for that. It's also fashion week, so this country bumpkin... <laughs> This country bumpkin is going to be up there. I, I don't know if I'm going to sing Here Comes the Hot Stepper or I don't know. I'm going to have to do something. Or or what's the RuPaul song? Well, turn to the left, turn to the right. Some oh, cover girl. I'm, cover girl. We're going to have a ball. We're we are, yeah, we're going to have a blast. Yeah. I'm so, I, I am very excited. It's been years since I've been to New York. This is just a great excuse to go. And um, don't worry, folks, we will be learning and we will be sharing. We won't just be hanging out with the with the hot models. So there you go. <laughs> Well, we, we you, if you want the opportunity to join us, there is that opportunity. If you go to hrredefined.namely.com, and when you register, if you use the code HRR196, you get 50% off a ticket. Yeah. Uh, so take advantage of that. Uh, we do know there are going to be some folks that uh, that have been on the show or that we're associated with that we believe are going to be there. So we'd love to have uh, as much of a social hour contingent yeah. as we can have. And to show namely that uh, our support for them and their support for us, again, super excited. More to come. Mm-hmm. We've talked a lot about <laughs> HR Redefine, though, and, and yep. you're going to hear that tag for the next little bit. But I am really stoked for tonight's guest. He, Somebody I just got to, to know in the last many months has busted on the scene with HR Thrash and Metallica Monday. <laughs> and so we talked, a, we talked a little bit ago, and I was like, you've got to come on the show. He was kind enough to do that. So... Enough of that. I'll let you yeah. make the introduction. And we will get started. Awesome. Well, I am thrilled to be talking to the first time for the first time to Paul Lalonde, uh, who is joining us. He is a husband, dad, VP of Ops slash HR at the Volunteer Action Center in DeKalb County. He is SHRM CP certified and an adjunct professor. And most excitedly, um, excitingly for me anyway, is that we'll get to meet him in person at SHRM 19 in the blog squad. So, Paul, welcome to the show tonight. Our first question, what's in your glass? 
Well, John and Wendy, I want to thank you both for inviting me on. I'm, I'm very excited to be here. And uh, keeping with the DeKalb County theme, uh, there's a local distillery here called Whiskey Acres because we are surrounded by nothing but cornfields. And so I have a glass of straight bourbon whiskey that I'm sipping on. You and Keith Enix are going to get along very well. I know you probably <laughs> already do, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> That's excellent. That's excellent. Paul, I know you and I have had a chance to talk a little bit, you know, in the last many months, but tell us a little bit, you know, how exactly did you get your start in human resources? Well, it was not traditional, uh, which I don't think is anything unusual for many HR uh, folks, but uh, I originally went to school to be a teacher, and then I remembered uh, what I was like in high school and quickly decided that wasn't what I wanted to do. <laughs> so I went back to school to be uh, eventually a city manager, work in city government, uh, got a master's of public administration, but I graduated at probably one of the the worst times called uh, this little event called the Great Recession, and cities were not hiring at the time for various reasons. So uh, what I ended up doing was actually where I was interning during grad school, uh, the Voluntary Action Center, they were expanding some of their services in a local county. And, and luckily, I got to, to know my boss at the time, and he asked me, hey, do you want to be a program director for this Upstart Transit program? I said, absolutely. Uh, it was a great opportunity anyway. So while I didn't have the title per se of HR or anything in there, I had tons of HR functions. I mean, I was recruiting, interviewing, hiring, you know, doing performance management training, development, org structure, all that stuff. And during that sort of journey, I discovered I really like this. So ended up uh, eventually taking that path. Uh, taking some more courses on HR and, and ending up in that way. Cool. Um, I don't think we've had someone come from that direction, coming from city planning. But uh, you know, planning is good. Um, if you can organize a city, you could probably control people. Maybe. <laughs> well, um, yes, maybe. That's the key. <laughs> well, Paul, you've been with your current organization for several years. Can you explain a bit about the Voluntary Action Center and what types of challenges do you face from an HR perspective that may be unique to the business? Voluntary Action Center VAC, uh, for short, we're a social service nonprofit. Uh, we're centered in Sycamore, Illinois, which is in DeKalb County. And uh, we, we provide transit and nutrition services to a five county region in North Central Illinois. So we provide like uh, much more than this, but the easiest way to really describe it is the senior bus or providing meals on wheels to senior uh, individuals and then also providing transit for uh, individuals with disabilities in the area. So keeping them connected to the greater community, uh, which sometimes, you know, when people are sort of on uh, shut ins at home or not having much connection or other resources, they get lost in the community. So we help to provide those services that keep them connected. The biggest challenge facing nonprofits, really, especially in Illinois, uh, I know when you're from the Dakota area and then Virginia, for John, I don't know how much news you get on Illinois politics, but the mess is, the, the state is really in a mess, uh, very dysfunctional. So a lot of the funding kind of comes and goes a little bit. So from the HR perspective, it's like, we need to hire staff, but we don't know when the next bill is coming. The state didn't have a budget for a couple of years, literally didn't have a budget. So how are we going to get paid to do these services and, and staff our agency on top of it? And then how do you train your staff if you don't have the money coming in? And then at the federal level, we receive federal dollars to a similar situation, especially with the government shutdown. It's not as bad as the, as sort of the state uh, level, but luckily Illinois is starting to come out of it, and we've seen a little bit more consistency. And then another challenge, especially from the HR side of things on nonprofit, a lot of nonprofits don't necessarily have a structured human resources department. So that was one of my proudest moments during my career at VAC was I sort of built the HR department 
and consolidate a lot of the functions that were in our regional offices and brought them in house under me and my my team. So, uh, and that was awesome and had the the backing of the CEO to consolidate all those functions. So that's just a little bit of some of the challenges that we face. Paul, when you when it comes to the budget piece, does that present challenges in terms of from a staffing perspective? You know, we obviously everybody we talk to is struggling when it comes to hiring and retention. How does that play, you know, in terms of identifying folks? I'm assuming a lot of the people that you're working with are maybe part time or are those challenges as well for you? When I first started at VAC, it was it was kind of like that, yes. So it was a, a lot of part-time individuals who were on their second career, who were retired. They wanted to stay active in the community. So, you know, they hung up their, their work boots and then put on their, their driving keys and said, well, I want to go drive and, and help out the community. Over time, as we've kind of grown and expanded services and transit, uh, especially in in the nu- nutrition delivery standpoint, uh, the senior population keeps growing. You know, it's uh, the baby boomers are starting to move on, so we've seen a lot of that challenges. So we've hired more staff and had to do more full time work. From the hiring standpoint, it has been challenging these last last year, year and a half, with uh, the economy being so good. Uh, I always said, sort of a double edged sword. You want a great economy, but then when you go to hire and you can't hire anybody kind of uh, uh, stinks a little bit. But luckily at VAC, one of the things we're real proud about is we have very low turnover because we feel that that mission-based delivery of services, you know, really kind of fulfills a lot of our staff. You know, they, and, and again, a lot of them are on their second career retirement gig anyway. They're not looking to, they've already kind of done their career path. So that coupled with the mission-based delivery of services and helping the community, we, our, our turnover, thankfully, is really low. That's great to hear, especially because it's such a critical need in any community, but especially if you're dealing with budget challenges and what have you at a state level, it's it's great to hear that you have an, you know, you have a, an employee base that's committed because it, it's what they want to be doing. You started your blog I think earlier this year, maybe late last, but you landed on the HR philosopher as a title. So how did you come up with that title? And then what's the response been since you first launched? I'm really happy you guys asked this question because I was actually going to write a post about it in the next couple of weeks. So I'll give you a little taste. I won't give away all the the cow with the milk, but. Fair enough. (laughs) What I was thinking when I was in high school, one of my favorite things to do was go visit my grandpa and we would just sit on the back porch and just chat. And I would listen to him more because I had nothing to say. I was in high school and he had a lifetime of experience to tell me. So one day he actually turned to me and said, you know, Paul, you're a thinker. And that always kind of stuck with me a little bit. And and, and I've always liked philosophy and I've always liked theory and, and literally thinking about a lot of those things. They fascinated me. So as I was doing all this research and figuring things out, eventually I discovered was uh, Stoicism, which is this uh, ancient philosopher of ancient Rome. And it's a vastly misunderstood philosophy uh, because everyone thinks, well, if you're Stoic, you have no emotion and all that. That's not what it's about. It's really about controlling your emotions. So your emotions don't control you. And one of the, the biggest stoic philosophers uh, is epictetus uh, and he said philosophy is for everyone and it's about living your best life and acting on what is right that was philosophy to him and that was stoicism so i was hooked ever since then so as so in essence i kind of take that to heart and brought that to the blog because to me hr is about doing the right thing so hr in essence is an act of philosophy in my mind so that was sort of my my connection to that. And, and when I started the blog, I started, I, I just kind of wrote it for me, only kind of sharing it out there. So I just kind of wrote my own thoughts of, of not looking to really kind of impress anybody or do anything or draw any. So when I put it out there, I didn't really know what to think, but I've just been 
really humbled once I hit that share button uh, to see the reactions of a lot of people saying that my posts have influenced them, which I never ever thought would have happened or never really thought about. And it made them think different or inspired them or whatever. I, you know, I'm just me. I'm just Paul. I didn't think that I was really going to be that interesting to somebody out there. So to have that response has been, uh, again, really humbling and uh, making me uh, think a little bit differently about how I should uh, continue this. It's just been awesome. That's very cool. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, Wendy, I don't know about you, but I don't think I was ever would have imagined when we started this, we would be talking no. about philosophers and stoicism with no. anybody. <laughs> no. I love it. So kudos to you, you Paul. You, <laughs> for continue, continue to open you've added our a, little, a, up. a new level of class to well, the show, Paul. So I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I thank you. I appreciate that, too. But, you know, it's... Uh, it's just about being yourself, you know, at the end of the day, and hopefully uh, it can make an impact. And I think that's important too that that you feel comfortable enough to share your your whole self uh, through your blog and with us. And so I appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of it as you continue to share on your blog and through the blog squad um, at Sherm 19. I know that I'm excited to meet you in person um, and and hang out in Vegas. But what are you most looking forward to um, as part of the blog squad? Oh, man, I'm I'm so excited and honored. Uh, and, and real quick, I want to give a shout out to uh, Callie Zippel, who is a SHRM field director, uh, and she covers a part of Illinois. Uh, she threw my name out there, and apparently it stuck. So uh, thank you to Callie for, uh, for helping me uh, launch onto the blog squad because I just thought it was so cool. There's so many awesome bloggers that were named to the squad this year such as the the, the co present company included and you know what i'm really looking forward to most is just connecting with all of these individuals and reading what they have to think sharing what i have to think and maybe going back and forth a little bit well i didn't think of it like that well this has just been so influential and so on and so forth so uh, a lot of these individuals on the blog team i've kind of admired from the side for years. So to get to, to work with them on this kind of a level has just been so cool. Uh, so I, I'm just really excited about that. And I just reached out to uh, Dr. Carolyn uh, Borosenko, who is a Zen Your Workplace, and asked her a whole bunch of questions for her, uh, for her SHRM uh, mega session. So I'm so excited to get that out there. That'll be coming out in the, in the next couple of weeks. She's just awesome. And being able to to share her story is one of the things I'm uh, excited about, too. She's awesome. Um, I got to see her last year. I saw her on the um, smart stage and then got up to see her 7 a.m. session as well. So, um, <laughs> yeah, she's fantastic. Um, you will love seeing her live. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you share about her because she is she's one of my favorites. Um, and I can't wait to see her again, too. So, yay. I can't wait to share it with all yeah. of you. Carlin's also yep. a previous guest. And if you like RoboCop, that's what you can <laughs> talk to her about because it's her favorite movie of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all I... I will make a mental note of that because there's one scene in particular of that movie that I love <laughs> so much. So I will bring that up with her. Awesome. It's become a bone of contention amongst us about some other. <laughs> I'm a predator. <laughs> I like I like RoboCop, but I like Predator more. But yes, RoboCop. She said it's her favorite movie of the '80s. Carlin, oh. hopefully you're listening. Yeah, you can. You you all can talk <laughs> talk about that when you get a chance to meet her. That's awesome. I hey. Just throwing it out there, I am a diehard Arnold fan oh. back in the day. I, any go. Arnold movie, you know, I quote any of his one-liners, just that cheesy 80s action stuff, I'm all on board with that. So, Well, Paul, it is now time for everyone's favorite part of our show, the Half Hour Question Connection. Woohoo! And it is brand new for 2019. And our first question is who was your first professional mentor and what was the most important thing you learned from them? You know, when I was trying to think about this question, the very first thing that popped in my head was my very first boss when I was working at Kmart of all places. And you don't think, well, some 16 year old stock boy, you know, what's professional mentor about that? But 
it was my very first job and I always had a good work ethic, I felt, but Mike was his name. He really kind of taught me how to be professional and comport yourself. You know, even when you're a 16 year old stock boy cleaning toilets and bathrooms and all that stuff, take pride in that because that's what you're doing right now and there. And it re kind of reflects back on who you are. So I always took that very seriously and have always thought back to my, my experiences then. Uh, from the HR context, the biggest mentor I really have, uh, his name is John Newton, and he's president CEO of his own uh, consulting firm here in uh, the Chicago suburbs. When I was trying to decide, am I going to be in HR, uh, I took the Sherm Essentials HR class, and he taught it. And I was kind of wavering. I wasn't fully confident, and he didn't know me, but he kind of pulled me aside during one of the class sessions. and, and kind of pumped his fist on his heart and said, Paul, you have what it takes. You know this stuff. And that just blew my mind that this guy who didn't even know me was giving me that much confidence and, and uh, gusto. So thankfully, we've stayed in touch and have been friends ever since then. So uh, I know you asked for one. I'm sorry I gave you two, but I, I really, both of those really meant a lot to me. Who's one person that you've gained in your network in the last year that you think more people should know about? This one was easy. Uh, Eric Kershat, and uh, he's the founder of Harmony Insights. It's a disc personality assessment uh, consulting firm that he started in Chicago. He's just such a genuine person who's so knowledgeable about just disc in general, but much more than that, really about making meaningful connections with people. And he's also the founder of an awesome idea, which is called the HR Hot Seat, where a whole bunch of HR professionals get together once a month and just have a, a general open discussion, a town hall meeting sort of a thing. And he is one of the, the most awesome craft beer enthusiasts I know. So, uh, Eric, I would highly recommend anybody. Craft beer. You got me. I'm there. <laughs> Say, he's a new, Eric's a new name for he's me. That's name, excellent. Yeah. Awesome. So, Paul, if you could go back to the start of your career, what's one piece of advice you would give yourself based on what you know now? Honestly, it just sums it up in three words. Just keep swimming. Uh, honestly, because you, you don't know where your journey is going to take you. And, and that's OK. You know, you mentioned earlier being a, a planner, a city planner, all that. It's OK to have the plan, but the plan will blow up. <laughs> it just will. Uh, so just relax sit back and then just enjoy where you're headed. Good advice. How do you like giving back to the HR community? I really enjoy volunteering uh, with HR groups. I'm really active in my local SHRM chapter, which is uh, the Illinois Fox Valley SHRM based in Elgin. And there's also a local HR group to DeKalb Sycamore, Illinois. Uh, it's not SHRM affiliate, but the, both groups are just filled with awesome people. Uh, such dedicated, passionate HR pros. So volunteering with them and, and helping them with their events has been awesome. And just forming connections with a whole bunch of people uh, like uh, Jeff Pukowski, Mary Williams, uh, Callie, Kyra. I, you know, I could name a bunch, but I don't want to leave anybody out. We kind of form what's called the state line crew, where we meet once every other month or so and just kind of hang out and refresh ourselves. So uh, that's kind of one of my favorite things to do to give back to the HR community. Love your state. I'm proud to be an honorary <laughs> member of state line crew and I hope to join at some point in real life. Same. Same. We, we give them out. Anybody can join. There you go. <laughs> Even better. I love it. So Paul, what is your favorite movie? This was difficult because I honestly, 100% don't have a favorite movie, but uh, I'm just a huge geek. So anything in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Batman, oh, Batman is amazing in every way. You know, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, all those type of things. And of course, like I said, cheesy 80s Arnold movies. Which one of those is your favorite? If I had to throw one, probably uh, Predator, just because it's... Uh, it's a little more serious and hardcore, I guess, but uh, still has those awesome, funny one-liners. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll take I, it. I was going to ask, <laughs> too, um, you said all the Batman movies now, so who's the best Batman? Uh, Kevin Conroy. 
and he was Ooh, like, oh, wow. good answer. Yeah. It's like, for those that don't know, he's like, who's Kevin Conroy? Well, he was the voice of Batman on the animated series, and he is Batman. So. <laughs> nice. How about your favorite musician or band? I think I know the answer, but. <laughs> Metallica. 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 Live, breathe, and eat Metallica. So, I don't know. I can't really describe it. They're just a part of who I am. <laughs> and uh, uh, people are like, well, what about lame 90s Metallica? I'm like, I don't care. I love all Metallica, whatever they do. How about a favorite TV show? This one is a little bit of a caveat. Um, Really kind of two really have been awesome throughout my entire life, but really Simpsons, oh. I would say, uh, specifically seasons three through eight. Uh, anything, anything after that, it's kind of okay, hit or miss, but Simpsons season three through eight is some of the greatest television that had ever come on TV, and I might be dating myself for others, but... My, there has not been a point in my life where I do not remember that they've been on TV. Right. Uh, but, and uh, I would also say I'm just a huge Game of Thrones fan. I, they're just such great television. So, Paul, I knew I liked you. And then you came up with Simpsons like that. I, I am <laughs> I am willing to admit that I was in college when The Simpsons started, or right around there. <laughs> Uh, oh, no. I'm sorry. I, so I remember. My bad. I remember three through eight was very solid, and your your uh, your adoration for Arnold movies. I'm right there with you. If you had said Commando, you'd be my new best friend because it is the greatest Arnold Schwarzenegger movie ever made. That's okay because I love Predator too. Having said that, <laughs> if you're not watching all these Marvel movies, if you're not listening to Metallica, not watching those uh, great seasons of The Simpsons. What else do you like to do outside of work? Uh, number one is family, you know, hanging out with them and uh, making memories. Uh, I'm a huge St. Louis Cardinals baseball fan. Uh, I, I literally bleed red, uh, Cardinal red. Also love traveling and, and beer, and then often traveling that revolves around beer. <laughs> so uh, a few years ago, my wife and I, we went to Portland, Oregon, and I plotted out all the breweries we were going to. This past September, he actually went to uh, Germany, which was a, a an amazing kind of bucket list trip where we went to uh, Oktoberfest. So I take it seriously when we plan trips around beer. Nice. nice. Well, if you ever come visit me, you'll have to come on a Wednesday so you can I can take you out for some nice craft beer and bingo. John won a hat. Oh, that's a... <laughs> I have a hat. <laughs> I absolutely love that combination, and I might try and uh, you know some of the seniors we take around. I might kind of pitch that idea oh, to them. Uh, you know, it's a it's a load of fun. Um, it you know you don't put any money in, and you win free beer. So win win there. <laughs> you might have won the seniors over with the free beer, but not the money. Yeah, they got to put the money. In. So, yeah. That's true. Well, maybe if you you know if you're playing for quarters, they might might be okay. <laughs> Uh, well, Paul, if you weren't in the HR profession, what do you think you'd be doing professionally? Uh, I'd be Batman. Yes. But no, seriously. Uh, That's, That's awesome. first. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I don't have uh, I don't have Bruce Wayne money or intellect. So honestly, uh, I would have actually I, we started this talking about how I wanted to be a teacher. I actually probably would have finished that out and ended up being like a college professor, which still eventually could be on the table. But either that or a uh, Bavarian tour guide, because Bavaria is just gorgeous. And then I get to show people the mountains and drink beer with them. <laughs> so, Love it. Paul, we've never had anybody say mm -hmm. Batman. We've never had anybody say Bavarian tour guide. <laughs> I'm glad you're not those things as much as I adore both of them, particularly Bavaria beer. Uh, yeah, we're glad you're not, though, because if you were, we wouldn't be talking to you tonight. So I, I know this was your first experience. I know when we first talked, you're like, I'm not so sure about this. So glad that you came on board and were willing, to, willing and more than ready to go in terms of, of joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. 
for those folks that are listening that don't know you, they're going to want to go follow you now based on what you're putting out there. What's the best way for them to reach you? Well, I want to thank uh, you guys for the invite. I This was so much fun. And, and you're right. I it, it, This was just a lot of fun and uh, talking with both of you. And I can't wait to, to see you and talk again soon. But for anybody that wants to, to come find me, uh, I on Twitter at HRPaul49. Uh, also on LinkedIn, and then, of course, my HR Philosopher uh, website, which is on uh, WordPress. We will have all that in the show notes. Wendy, how about you? What's the best way for folks to find you out there? Best way is on my blog, mydailyjourney.com. Daily is D as in dog, A-I-L-E-Y. And the fourth Sunday of each month, you will find me on Twitter at 7 p.m. Eastern time as part of our monthly HR Social Hour Twitter chat. How about you, John? HRSocialHourPodcast.Podbean.com. You go to the left-hand side of the screen, right at the top, you'll see three little lines. You open them up, you'll find links to all my social there. In the meantime, if you're in New York City between May 5 and 7, you'll see us at HR Redefine. Certainly look at joining us there. We'd love to have you there. And as always, if you're listening to this episode and you're on, on our website, go back, listen to previous episodes, download rate and review. We don't ask for much. We're going to ask once again, if you can share, share what you've heard, rate us, help us boost our signal. We can't thank you enough for that. And for all of you that continue to do so. Well, again, Paul, appreciate being with us tonight. So for the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast, I'm John. And I'm Wendy. And as always, be sure to connect, give back, and network. network. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. 